Hello everybody and welcome back to my tips and tricks on Space Engineers series that I'm doing. Today we're going to be looking at power generation, or more specifically, early game power generation. So we're not going to be looking at reactors because you basically just plonk down a reactor and give it your random and it works. We're going to be looking at the more interesting um, renewable power generation, as well as some hydrogen later on. Just to give some little tips and tricks and facts that you may not know about this early game power generation. So let's start off with the wind turbine. So you can obviously see the difference between these two turbines. The red one is spinning a lot faster than the black one. And if I went and had a look at the actual RPM or the um, power generation that this one makes, it's 224.7 kilowatts and this one is uh, 454.6 kilowatts. You can see quite a big difference between those two. Um, so one fun thing you may want to know, or well, my first little tip, is how far to space your wind turbines apart when you're trying to set up a grid. So the actual distance that you want is eight blocks between the turbines, so from this block here all the way to this block here, or ten blocks if you include the actual pillars, and eight block tall for the pillars to be. So that means from that block of basically from that edge to that edge it is eight blocks, and from that block to that block is eight blocks. And that allows you to again have a wind turbine which generates 454.7 kilowatts, which is good. Like I say, the normal, so this is the normal amount of power that it generates, so this is the lowest you can really get. And during a storm, this is the max, so at uh, 682 kilowatts. Quite a big difference between, you know, those two. You're basically getting almost oh, three times more power uh, just by having them raised up. So, you know, not bad. But these, necessar these aren't necessarily the most efficient way of laying out your um, wind turbines. You can see there's quite a big difference, or quite far apart from each other, obviously for efficiency, but in terms of how close you can place these, imagine if you needed like 20 of these, it would be a massive uh, space. So that's where something like this comes in. So these are pillars requiring, you know, or, or pillars giving three um, wind turbines each. If you wanted to, you could increase this to four by placing another two on this side, but you'd have to uh, space these apart by an extra two blocks because you'd have to also extend these um, out. You'd have to place um, a couple of pillars. Oh, I do not have my inventory organized <laughs> like this. You'd have to, that's not generally. You'd have to place it like that on each side, which I think these are all right. It still shows the difference. As you can see, these are still generating 454, and these are also generating 454. So the fact is, it doesn't really matter how close the tops of these are. It, the bit that, or the main thing that matters on these wind turbines is how much of this side bit is covered. Um, and for this to work, it has to be a little bit taller than these ones. So where these ones are eight, these ones are, I believe, eleven. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes. There you go. 8 blocks tall. And 8 blocks from side to side. So the same distance. And that shows wind turbines. That's basically... That, that This is basically the most efficient way of doing it. Nice and easy. So if you're ever going to build a wind turbine, try and make it 8 blocks tall. You're going to be the most efficient that you're going to be. So let's move on to the next power generation, shall we? And yes, pro probably quite obvious, the next power generation is solar, or solar PV, because, you know, that's a technical term. Um, so solar panels, nice and simple, if they get sunlight, they generate power, as you can see, generating power. Um, and a fun little tip for you, if you're ever making anything with solar panels, doesn't matter if they're moving or if they're stationary, you can double up your panels. So if you get a solar panel and you put them back to back like that. So 
this panel is connected to this sort of block and this panel is connected to this block, you can end up having double the amount of power for the same amount of space really. So this one is generating 159.8 and this one is also generating 159.8. Yeah, light can pass through panels. It's kind of, kind of fun. Um, so yeah, the next thing is like how do you make your panels as efficient as possible and this is what basically what I've done here. Just a couple of different designs. And these use the, uh, whatever it's called, custom turret controller. And it uses the always aim at sun uh, protocol. And this basically just means that you can uh, build solar trackers without needing any kind of scripts. Kind of nice. So you set up your um, rotors. So I've done rotor up and down and then rotor left and right so basically just left right and then you've got this one up and down and the other thing you need to have is a camera somewhere on the grid that's i think how the um thing detects where the sun is Must, yeah whatever script thing that runs in the game and yeah so you set up your um rotors just like you would with a turret and then you assign the camera you don't really have to change any of these multipliers and then you turn on aim and ta-da it just magically works so if i was to change the timer of day that we are currently at you see they are spinning a bit shaky because i'm doing super fast but you can see they just try and track the sun as best as they can Nice and easy. But as you can see, or one of the main limitations with uh, this is you can only have one, or you can only have two rotors, one that does the up and down and one that does the left and right. Well, that's not ideal because that means you only have like half a panel. You can imagine the other half is just gone. That's where this one comes in. As you can see, it's got both sides. It's literally that but double. And this uses obviously my lovely little trick of using the railings to be able to have the pass through. And then I've just got them connected so the rotor goes around to here gets connected just through some blocks in this case I've used the neon tubes and then it goes back up and on all the panels are connected to that it does mean that you miss out on two other panels so as you can see here where we've got all this stuff we can't double up the panels but you don't really notice it and it's you know not that much loss for you getting pretty much double the amount of panels. Anyway, moving on to the next one, obviously we don't have to have these as the, these aren't the only designs for panels. We can do something like this, which is nice and flat. Again, it's still doubled up. And the only rotation points are these ones. So right here. So all it can really do is tilt up and down. You know, it's technically as, well, not quite as efficient as that, but it still, you know, gets most of it. And obviously when the sun goes through the time of day, it rotates back and forth nice and easy and this uses the uh, limitations of a rotor so we've got 12 degrees uh, up and down and yes yeah, so that just means it can't whack into the ground we've got a camera just down here obviously these aren't designed to copy so to say this more just showing up how it works fuel critical and it looks like we're about to have a storm and i don't want to do the storm so not today thank you very much and then this is basically the same design as that, but just a bit bigger. And this one can actually rotate. We have a rotor just there on that block. And so that means it can spin full 360 and stick up like that. And I think this is actually quite a nice design. I like all these, but this one's kind of nice. You can imagine having quite an array of these ones just dotted around, especially in a desert like this. And yeah, generates a nice amount of power. But the main tip on, main tip for this was really just um, doubling up. If you can, always double up the panels. It just makes it way more efficient. Why would you not? But having these sort of systems are also good. 
I think it's time to move on to our third power generation, and that is hydrogen. Like I said, the third one is hydrogen. And so, might as well give some tips for hydrogen, eh? So, to be able to power an engine, you need one O2 generator. So basically, it's a one-to-one. -one. And that is because the O2 generator produces 500 litres of hydrogen and 250 litres per second of oxygen, where the hydrogen engine requires 500 litres of hydrogen. Like, 500 litres per second. So it's a one-to-one. -one. As you can see, if I was to put some ice in here... There we go. So I've put some ice in this one. As you can see, it'll generate power, but it's only going to generate half of the amount and use all of the hydrogen. Where if I went to this one where it's just a one-to-one one -one transition, so it's got ice in here. This is going to be generating the full output, but obviously not burning any, or not giving any more or any less. Nice and efficient. So yeah, one one to one. And these, to be honest, the hydrogen engines are insane. They generate 5 megawatts of power for only using uh, 500 litres of ice, or 500 litres of hydrogen per second. And to be honest, you can see, we, if you were anywhere near an ice lake and you or you can get ice nice and easy, very, very strong power. Very, very strong indeed. But with us having all of this type of power, you kind of have to think about, okay, so let's say solar panels at night time, dark. With wind turbines during a storm, you're going to generate more power than normal so you might want to you know collect as much as, as you can that's where batteries come in like now batteries i i think people don't really understand batteries all too well sometimes so with batteries you have a maximum input and output and then a storage and the maximum input is important especially if you have a base with a lot of different power generation because if you only had one battery you can see the current input is 12 megawatts, but the max input you can get is 12 megawatts. That means you're losing out. Let's say I had a massive solar array, and all my solar panels are generating more than 12. I'm losing power. I strap down two. You can see this one is also using, or also generating 12, because it's splitting up the batteries. Still more than we can store. So if I strap down a third one, you can see it goes down to 9.45. That means I'm now picking up all of the current power that this grid is generating. And you always want to have a little bit extra, just of course, if a storm happens, you're going to be generating a lot more power in terms of wind. However, you're also going to be losing power when it comes to solar, because dust storms block sunlight. <sighs> but yeah, so that, that always try and make sure that you're have you have enough space of input when you're um doing things like this but it's also important to know your output so the current output is only 300 and oh, 339.54 kilowatts so basically nothing but let's say you're on a big ship or something and you have something like jump drives jump drives require a lot of power uh, if I went to the jump drive, you can sort of see the max um, max required power input Do is 32 well. megawatts, right? So if you only had like a small amount of batteries and you were trying to charge it, you wouldn't get there very quick. But if you have, you know, multiple batteries where this power is split across, when, they, when these discharge to charge it back, you're going to be charging a lot faster. Just a little tip. But yeah, like I say, all these all these little uh, videos are going to be trying oh, try to be as short as possible. That way, if they're not boring, but they try and inform new people as well as more experienced people about space engineers. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, remember to hit the like button. It helps me out more than you think it does. If you did find something in this episode that you didn't know, maybe consider subscribing. But yeah, as always, my name has been Quantum Chief. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.